welcome to the Astranti video for the real world industry analysis. Now this one is for IC optical and the optical industry. Now my name is Matt and I am a financial writer and media producer for Astranti and I actually had the pleasure of writing this industry pack so I am the perfect person to lead you through it and let you know about all the bits that are most useful for you in your exam. Now it's quite a large industry pack, but don't worry, I'm not going to go through every single page one by one. I'm only going to cover the most important parts that you need to know. So if we just start at the history of the industry itself, we can learn a little bit about the key features of the services they provide and the challenges that they face. So I'm going to skip all the earlier stuff. Believe it or not, it goes way back to medieval times. And we're just going to talk about the modern era. So one of the key things that happened in the modern era is the emergence of the NHS. Now, the NHS is quite unique to the UK, but there are lots of developments in the medical services elsewhere in the world. And what this means for the opticians industry is that there is a lot more regulation than there used to be in the past. Now, this is largely because of the scientific tests and the methods used to diagnose patients of eye conditions. Before modern era, eye tests were usually quite trial and error, and it was the customer's responsibility to pick the right lenses for them. Of course, all that has changed, and now it's the responsibility of the optician to pick the correct strength lenses um, for the customer. Obviously, this requires quite a lot of expertise and a certain level of competence and the regulations are there to make sure that these levels of competence are met. Now, I've talked about the NHS as the example in the UK, but worldwide, glasses are seen as a medical issue and the diagnosis of eye conditions are done by optometrists and ophthalmologists. Now, these are essentially eye doctors, although they're not always called doctors. You may have noticed I've been using the word customers and patients interchangeably and that's because they kind of are. There's a kind of mixed status of people who go to opticians and that's because glasses are also a retail item as well as a medical treatment. Now this is the second strand of the optician market where it's about finding spectacles that look good not just make you see well. Nowadays there's quite a large range of designer glasses frames on offer as well as their own brand from optician stores like Specsavers. Because of this, the opticians market's subject to the same kind of pressures that designer clothing might be subject to. So celebrities and fashions are quite important. This has consequences for the market in terms of turnover. So a product's life will last shorter now that fashion is involved as well as practicality. So whilst we go through this industry pack, I just want you to constantly be thinking about the medical aspect and the retail aspect, because although they're quite distinct, in the opticians industry, they're uniquely combined. Now, there are several types of lenses and different conditions that they treat, but we don't really need to know too much about this, other than for some conditions only glasses can be used whereas other ones there are other options such as contact lenses and laser eye treatment. So just a quick example here of how the medical aspect can affect sales and the way that companies advertise themselves is the fact that some governments will provide subsidies or will actually pay the full costs of eye tests. So in the pre-C materials we're told that IC Optical receive 100 sealand dollars for every eye test. This is great news. It means that people don't have to pay for their eye tests in sealand. However, it offers a retail challenge for IC Optical. They can't compete with their competitors on price anymore, so they have to think of creative ways to get the customers coming to them instead of their competitors. One thing they could do is ensure that they have a professional quality that is well known to the public. If you're going to get any medical treatment done, you want it done by the very best. 
and the most professional. So this is a good way of getting customers to come to you. However, there are alternatives. Whilst you can't offer cheaper eye tests as they're subsidized by the government, you can offer free glasses or a discount on glasses if you get your eyes tested with IC Optical. However, we'll go into more detail about how companies can present themselves to the public and the ways that they can ensure that they get customers coming to them later on. But that was just an example to get you thinking about the kind of dual nature of the optician's industry. It is a medical practice, but it is also a retail store. So now let's look at some other aspects of the optician's industry that will be useful for you to know for your exam. Technology is a very important aspect of the optician's industry. It is necessary to create the materials used for glasses and lenses, and it's also important for their construction. Lenses have to meet very specific prescriptions in terms of the lens strength. This requires a lot of equipment and know-how in order to diagnose the patient with this prescription, as well as to produce the lenses with that right level of strength. Now, because of the importance of technology and expertise, as well as the expense of providing the technology and expertise, only a few companies have the capital to expand or make any real headway in the market. Now, this is why the industry is dominated by huge companies and corporations. In the UK, we're all familiar with Specsavers. Now, this company originates from about 30 years ago and has dominated the market pretty much ever since. Another example would be the Luxottica Group. Now these are an Italian company and they own most of the designer brands that we are familiar with today, as well as some of the optician chains in other countries that we might not be so familiar with. Despite the difficulties of entering the optician industry, however, there are still quite a few independent op opticians everywhere in the world. In the UK, they take up about 30% of the market share. So if you're a big company like Specsavers or like IC Optical in the example, then there is still room in the market to take up more of the customer base. Talking of growth and expansion, the industry itself is actually still growing. Now, this might come as a surprise once you think about how long it's been around for, but because of the increasing population age, so the amount of people over 65, the need for glasses is still increasing. Another factor is the proliferation of computer screens, phones and televisions. Now these make conditions like myopia more prevalent. Myopia is just the technical jargon for short-sightedness. So there are a lot of factors that are still driving the growth of the industry. There also doesn't seem to be an end in sight for the industry as there aren't really any alternative treatments for most eye conditions. The main contender would be laser eye surgery and contact lenses. However, most people are quite distrustful of laser eye surgery as it's got quite a bad press, it's expensive and there are many risks involved. There's also the factor that it can only be done once or twice. So people have to wait for their eye conditions to stop getting worse before they can get the surgery done. Now considering that a large proportion of the customer base for opticians are over 65, not many people are going to adopt this. So it's safe to say the opticians market isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Now the retail part of the optician industry also means that it's going to be lasting for quite a while. It's now fashionable to wear glasses even if you don't need the lenses that's inside of them. This helps increase the amount of glasses that people will buy, but you should be cautious as fashion is famously very fickle and what may be in fashion now won't be in fashion later on. So who knows, in 10 years time, it may no longer be fashionable to have glasses. The industry itself can be broken down into five different stages. The two most important stages for us today are tests and diagnosis and sales and distribution. These are the most important because they're the aspects that all opticians are involved with. They also represent the two dynamics of the opticians which I've been talking about throughout this whole thing, about 
the retail side of things with the sales and distribution, and the medical side of things with the tests and diagnosis. Now, of course, some of the bigger companies like Specsavers or Luxottica, which I mentioned earlier, will be involved in their own lens production or their own frame production and design. But for most opticians, they're only involved in tests and diagnosis and sales and distribution. So the next page just has a little bit more detail about each of these stages, but we're gonna skip this now because we'll cover that in more detail later anyway. So if we just keep going down, we can look at the products. As I've already mentioned, you have the main product, which is glasses, but then you've got alternatives like contact lenses and laser eye surgery. Now I won't go into too much detail about the pros and cons of all of these, but just to know that glasses can be used for all conditions, whereas contact lenses and laser eye surgery are limited to certain types. Now just notice that this presbyopia here is just another word for the long-sightedness that older people get. So the customers that are 40 plus will be experiencing presbyopia rather than these other types. Now because of the, the nature of this condition, which I won't go into now, you can't use contact lenses or laser eye surgery to treat them. You can only use glasses. Now just remember that because it's gonna become important when we look at the different customers and sales tactics. So now we have the life cycle of the product. And for this one, I've just used glasses as the main example. So in the material phase, there are several factors to consider. Obviously, you want to get the cheapest materials available whilst providing the best quality of product. So for example, glasses often contain aluminium or iron. However, these are metals and because they're naturally occurring elements, they are subject to sourcing variabilities and therefore variable pricing. An alternative material would be plastic, which are synthetic and can be produced in a factory and are not dependent on the availability of the natural resources. Polymers are also used in the lenses. However, the problem with polymers is that they are synthetic and therefore they have harmful byproducts. Now this will become important when you're considering the environmental impact of your company. And this is important with corporate social responsibility, which can have dramatic effects on the profitability of your company, is the location of these materials. Synthetics can be produced anywhere, well, anywhere there's a factory to produce them. However, naturally occurring materials have to be found on site. So for example, aluminium, which we mentioned earlier, is often sourced from Australia. These are where most of the aluminium is found. However, if you're an optician in the UK and you're getting your materials from Australia, that's going to be a lot of cost in transportation, which we'll cover a bit later on. Just a map to help you out there. Now again, with the production phase, the main things you're going to be thinking about is how you can make it cheaper. So are there any new technological advancements which make production more efficient or with less waste materials? This is also important for the environmental impact again. Now we've already covered the transportation and it's quite simple. Um, but one thing that I didn't mention before is that because the materials and glasses aren't subject to wastage, you know, they don't decompose. Um, there's no real motivation for you to have them transported by the most expensive and quickest way possible. So you can go for the slower option that would probably be, be cheaper. Now the use phase is pretty straightforward. It's how long or how they're used. So glasses usually tend to last about two to three years. Now that's quite a long time considering that although a lot of people need them, they only need them for two to three years. However, this is increasing with the fashion conscious amongst us. Um, we all want the latest trends, we want to look good, so we're more likely to buy multiple pairs at a time or buy more frequently. And we can just skip over the disposable phase. Again, it's only really environmental concerns um, due to recycling and the materials available um, for use again. So I mentioned how you might want to try and find cheaper ways of producing materials. One is 3D printing, which has been a real life issue um, with many companies experimenting with its applications. And so has IC Optical in the pre-seen materials. 
However, in that instance, they've decided not to take it forward. So just be aware that there are technological advancements occurring, but also aware that they might not always pan out. This leads us to research and design. The opticians industry is one of those industries with very few products on offer. So any new technological development, in either the lenses or the frames are gonna be quite a big deal. Most developments come in forms of improving the lenses, either by making them resistant to glare or light on the lenses. Also, you can get UV ray protection lenses to protect you from the sun. However, there is a limit to the kind of broader uh, appeal of these different technologies. So things such as Google Glass, where you're kind of integrating electronic technology, that's quite a niche market. I don't know if everyone wants to have that or pay the price for that. So it's worth considering what people are actually willing to pay for their glasses and what they want for their glasses. Getting new technology just for the sake of it might not be beneficial for your company. But now let's move on to the customers and the trends in the market going on at the moment.